Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Higgins of the Wall Street Journal. Thank you all. I read about the future of cars for the Wall Street Journal. It's an honor to be here. I think we've got a special uh, guest here this morning that's going to be able to talk to us about what's going on with Faraday Future. Uh, let's bring out uh, uh, Karsten Breitfeld uh, on stage here. He is a 20-year veteran of BMW, where he held a number of uh, leadership positions, but probably is best known for shepherding the i8 hybrid electric sports car, which he did from conception to market in something like 38 months, which for those in the room from Silicon Valley and in the software world, it seems like a lifetime, but those uh, steeped in the traditions of big auto, that's a near miracle, and he maybe deserves to be sainted. I don't, I don't know. Let's bring him up here and, and talk about his new role at Faraday Future. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So you're an alumni of this stage, but last year when you were here, you were the CEO of Byton. Now you're the CEO of Faraday. You left Byton earlier this year. Let's, let's talk a little bit about that. Why did you leave Byton? Did you leave Byton to go to Faraday? So first of all, thank you very much, Tim, to talk to me here today. Um, this is an, a, a very good place to be. Uh, because, you know, this, this industry is converting into two parts. There's an old industry and there's becoming a new industry. Uh, old economy and new economy. And LA Auto Show is just heading towards the new economy. It's not so much an auto show. It's about technology mobility. And this is why I really like to be here. It's the reason why I was here last year and I'm here today. So I think what you're really asking is, why did I joy, join Faraday? Well, first of all, you, but the, you left Byton. Why did you leave Byton? The, this, this industry is... Uh, transforming from, from just selling cars made for drivers into an industry that will provide mobility solutions. It will become part of a bigger mobility ecosystem. The focus will go away from drivers to passengers, cars become connected and so on. And this will not only change the, the, the products, uh, it will change the business models of this industry. And now the question is, uh, where, what is the place? Where is the place to, to make this happen? And uh, if you look to Faraday, then you find uh, all the technology which is necessary to make this happen is available. There are great products, and one of the products is here, the FF91, wherever, whoever one can have a look at it later. You need the right ideas and business models for the future which are in place. And now what is missing, and this has been maybe something with room for improvement in the past, it's execution. Just make things happen and, and approach this future in small steps. And this is where I feel I can add value. And this is the reason why I joined this great company to make this happen. Okay, Faraday founded in 2014. Um, really, probably the poster child for the era of uh, a lot of interest from investors in, in putting money into creating maybe the next Tesla, but going beyond that, uh, trying to take advantage of an electric architecture, but doing connectivity with other vehicles, uh, autonomous, all kind of wrapped up in all these things. When you were at Byton and you were looking at Faraday as a competitor, what did you see as their advantage? And do you believe that's still there now that you have been on the job for, what, two months? You know, for running a startup company and enter this space, you basically have two extreme options. One is uh, that you talk about your plans, you talk about your visions, you create a lot of show and uh, a lot of presentations to attract people. Uh, this is what many startup companies are doing. And the other way is you, you invest in technology first. You create technology, the technology you need, and invest in product. And then you talk about your achievements. And uh, Faraday is definitely one, the company chooses the later way. So all the technology you need to, to make this mobility and shared cars, uh, sh a shared connectivity and shared mobility work is available at Faraday. Uh, the company invested a lot of money in making this happen. A lot of money. And what now cost it's a, uh, what, the, $2 the billion dollars or something? To, to, to go out. What, what, how much total has gone into Faraday at this point? Almost $2 billion? Uh, it is less than $2 billion, but a lot of money. But close to it. Uh, but if you see the achievements, um, to, to make connected cars prepared, really purpose-built for shared mobility happen, you need basically two kinds of technology. You need car technology, which is, has to be electric. And the electric powertrain, which was developed by Faraday, and the complete IP is at Faraday, is the most advanced and best electric powertrain in the whole industry. And I'm not ta only talking about startup companies here. If you compare it to Audi, 
to even BMW, to Mercedes, even to Porsche. It's a Taycan just coming out. Uh, if you talk about power density, if you talk about the power uh, range, uh, battery technology, this is the most advanced technology which is available right now. Now, the other part uh, might even be more important. If you want to create connected cars, if you want to create a third internet living space, how we call it, then you need connectivity, high-speed um, communication inside the car, you need screens, you need an operating system, you need a digital ecosystem behind it. All this was developed at, at uh, Faraday and is available and can, can be seen and shown at the product. How much money do you need? You're in the fundraising business right now. Yeah. How much do you need to raise to bring that vehicle out? Um, basically, our plan right now is, um, consists of two steps. One is this vehicle will go to the market not later than September of next year. It is basically pre-production state right now. Um, most of the parts are coming out of tools from suppliers and uh, now we, we have to enter the status of uh, the state of build it in, in a plant industrialization. But there's a second product uh, uh, in the pipeline already, which is a smaller version of it. We call it FF81 in a much more affordable price position. So the FF81 will compete in the Tesla Model S segment around 70, 60, 70, maybe 80,000 US dollars. 60 to 80,000 mm -hmm. dollars. And that, yes. it, what size would that be? Uh, you said a, mo a Model S size, or would that be more of a Model 3 size? This is a Model S, uh, Model Model S, S so size. A full size sedan. Yes. Is it a sedan or is it an SUV? It's, um, we, we don't classify the cars in those traditional segments. Um, these are all new concepts, let's say, crossovers if you want. Uh, for the style is uh, like we showed with the FF91, uh, but again, it will be a more affordable version of it. And this car will have pre-production state by end of next year as well. So there is a plan to go IPO in the beginning of 21. And uh, the, the runway we need to come to this IPO, it's around $850 million we, we are raising right now. And how is the fundraising going? I mean, there's, there's been a lot of drama around Faraday in the last few years, mm -hmm. whether it's executive turnover or the, some of the issues re, re, around the founder. He just filed for personal bankruptcy just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the appetite in the investment community? Yeah. Uh, I have to say it's, um, it, it came back and it's uh, much better today uh, than it was uh, several months ago. And the reason is, as you said, there has been, if you are very open here, um, there have been two reasons why people were a bit hesitating to talk uh, about investment for Faraday. Number one was uh, the perception that the execution is not the strongest because, again, technology was developed but no product in the market. And the second one was some personal issues of the founder of YT John. Now, both have been resolved. Um, I came in here with a clear plan to execute. In the first two months, I developed a plan how to bring this product uh, to the market uh, uh, next year. I brought some great people in, which are all known for execution capabilities. So I think this point is, is, is solved. And the second one, I think you saw the announcement that YTJR restructured his personal debts in a way that it's completely separated from Faraday now. So both of those blocking points are gone, and we feel uh, a lot of interest now, people coming back and talking to us, and uh, I'm quite confident that we can make this happen. But what's YT's, and the, the founder, the, also the man behind La Echo in China, really the Netflix of, of China, what's his involvement with Faraday at this point? He's still around, right? He still has a say. Yes, so his, uh, he is the chief product and user officer now, uh, because um, this is something very unique at Faraday. To make connected cars prepared and purpose-built for shared mobility happen, you need basically smart device on wheels. And this is car technology, and this is um, consumer electronics um, uh, technology and internet know-how. And he brings in a great, great know-how and, and heritage from uh, Le Eco being a very, very successful consumer electronics software and internet company. So his strength is that he really understands users. He understands how, how internet and software is working. I'm coming from the car side, and together I think we are a great team. So he is taking care about the users uh, and, and, and the product, uh, and I'm, I run the company. I think the last time that I was in one of the mules of that vehicle was 2017. Uh, it had a lot of uh, torque, as you would expect, in a, an electric vehicle. Um, the talk was that production, I think, was going to begin in 2018 and, and come to market. Clearly, that didn't happen. You're now saying that production is going to begin next year. Yes. 
where is production going? You, there was a plan for a billion dollar factory in Nevada somewhere, and that obviously didn't happen. Where are you doing production at this point? So we um, have a, a plant in Hanford right now, which is halfway between Los Angeles and San Francisco, uh, near Highway 5. This is not a huge plant. It's a plant which has a top capacity of 10 to 15,000 units. But the volume of the FF91 will be small. Uh, the FF91 is a brand shaper. Will be a, a, it's a luxury, very luxury car. Will be positioned between 150 and 200 thousand dollars. So the volume will be small. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we see Hanford as a as a pilot plant to bring our products to production. Mm -hmm. But we are working on production. Uh, approaches to scale the FF81, not only in the US, but in China as well. And it's going to be sold in the US and sold in China at the beginning? Correct. And who do you see the, the buyer for a $200,000 car? Um, you know, there, there is a market right now for $200,000 cars. Uh, and although the people buying um, whatever kind of um, uh, Bugattis and Bentleys and, and, and other very expensive cars or even sport cars, uh, they get more and more into, into trouble because they have to justify themselves. Why, they, why are they doing it? And sustainability is coming more and become more and more a premium value. This is not any longer something for just green people like it was many years before, but it becomes a premium value. So um, um, that's the first part. The second part is this car is designed for drivers. It has a 1,050 horsepower, uh, 0 to 60 miles in 2.2 seconds, which is definitely sports car performance. But uh, if you have a look at that, then you will see that maybe the even greater value is if you sit in the rear. It's, 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 it's created for passengers. You have big screens. The biggest screen is 27 inch. Uh, there are 11 screens uh, in it. Uh, you have a spa mode. You have the seats like, like first class airline experience. So um, this is definitely something which people in, will enjoy, which are used to sit on the rear seats. And you know this is very common in China, and it's even common to some degree in, uh, in, 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 uh, for, for some people in the U.S. So we're absolutely sure that we can all sell all of those cars um, very fast. You see this as a vehicle. It has the driving capability, but really what's differentiating it from a Tesla or some of the other electric startups out there is, is, is making the push that it's the back seat, the, the user experience, all those screens. With How many screens are in there? 11, 12? 11, yeah. So it's 11 screens, and I just There's got some driver distraction in there, right? So you're really not, you're intending for somebody to be driven in this. Yep. And is that a human driver, or is the idea that it's going to be autonomous? So first of all, it doesn't make too much sense to put a lot of screens and big screens in front of the driver, because the driver is the driver, and he should not be distracted. But, so. but wait a second. It's your, plas your last company that was a big screen in front of the driver, right? <laughs> I'm talking about <laughs> Faraday now. Oh, okay. right, right, right. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> and uh, I think you asked me, why did I join this company, and why do I think this can be, uh, will be the future? So you have to put the screens in front of the passengers, in front of the users. Yeah. Um, and so you will find here one for the for the passenger. You will find a big one, 27 inch for the rear passengers. You will find more displays and panels for the rear passengers. I just, just got the data yesterday. Uh, I think it's 11 screens uh, are displays in the car with an overall size of 100 inch, and the biggest one being 20, 27. And um, we don't call this body or interior or, or, or just screens. We call this whole experience third internet living space. Mm -hmm. And uh, you might ask, why, why, why did we choose this? Um, this is not about parts. This is not about screens. Uh, this is about a whole different experience. And, and if you are in your house, in your home today, then you, 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 you create the experience you want. You have the screens. You are connected. You have everything you need to be entertained and relaxed and, and what have you. If you go to your office, then uh, it's more or less the same, B maybe a bit more focused on work. Um, but in between, there's something missing. And I, I'm living 25 miles away from here. Mm -hmm. And this morning, it took me one, point, uh, one and a half hours to come here. One and a half hours for 25 miles. Huh? So I think you see there's a clear need for shared mobility, reduced number of cars, but there is a clear need for giving people valuable time while on the move and give some, create a different experience while, while you're on the car. How do you plan to make money? What's the business case here? Is it going to be selling these cars? Are you going to be leasing them? Is this an on-demand service? What is, what's the business? 
So it will depend very much from the product. This car will be sold to, to, to many people, uh, but the, the model, the ownership model is, is changing. So uh, between selling and, 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 and leading them out, I think these are ownership models we have today, but we will have subscri subscription models. And the more we go into shared mobility solutions, the more uh, it will go away, go away from a personal ownership. So, the business will come from selling cars or for leasing them or for, from ownership models for some time. But there are two more areas where, where I think the real business is. Um, this is a, this kind of real estate. So you have, again, big screens, you have an operating system, you have a complete Android world. So you can do everything uh, within this car which you are used to do on your, on your smart devices. And, um, the usage rate, if we put it into shared mobility solutions, will go up to 50, maybe 60%. So many, 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 many user hours. We will have many, many user hours in those products. Now, if we control the ecosystem, like, like, like a consumer electronics company are doing today, then we can monetize this time of people being in front of the screen and using our products and even other services. And this is where the real business is in the future. And the second part is uh, mobility itself. So I think the business case will move towards selling mobility and not so much cars. And, and what's your time horizon for something like that? When do you, is this the next, you think this in the next five years? Or what are you telling investors? When you're going to start making money off of the, essentially the user experience and the, the business of taking a person to a place, essentially? So we will see definitely great, big, cha big changes within the next five years. Our business assumption is for the next 10 years. So we have a target business case for 2030. And it's interesting to see, um, even in 2030, uh, still a significant part, but, but below 50%, will out of, we're coming out of selling or leasing out cars. But the profitability of this part is very low. Mm -hmm. I think, as you know today, the, 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 big, the best car companies of the world are doing an EBIT of 6%, at least the big ones, right. uh, by spinning a wheel of billions and billions and billions and having investments of billions. Right. Um, and, and this will not change if you, if you sell electric or connected cars. The, the digital services part will be huge in 2020, in 2030, will be not 50%, but, but uh, uh, close to it. But the profitability of this part is way, way higher. And the rest will come from, from shared mobility solutions. You, you, you're, kind of, you're painting a, a vision of creating a digital ecosystem that the consumer just yeah. buys into. Essentially, much like this device, this Apple iPhone, right? You buy into the Apple ecosystem, or maybe it's Android ecosystem. You have the capacity to do 10, 15,000 vehicles a year. You're not going to be a very large ecosystem at that point, right? How, how do you grow an ecosystem that has scale, that creates a value to whether it's advertisers or digital content producers, that they want to be part of that ecosystem? How do you get there quick enough as a startup? So there are two ways. Uh, first is, as I said, the Hanford plant is our uh, pilot plant. So we are going to do the 91, uh, and uh, we most likely are going to launch the 81 there. But uh, to scale to production, we are working on different production approaches in the US and in China, mm -hmm. because the FF81 will have a way higher volume. So we, we see a potential here, uh, which is far beyond 100,000 units a year. More than 100,000 units a year? Yes, for, yeah. for the FF81. Uh -huh. uh, and there we, we are working on a joint venture approach in China to, to industrialize this car in China as well. Mm -hmm. But there's uh, another way, which um, might not be so, so obvious. Um, we don't have to sell cars or to bring cars to the street to make our ecosystem work. Because our clear target is that our third internet living space experience will become benchmark. And we will only be successful if this becomes the benchmark. If people will love it because of functionality, because of its UI, and because of its overall feeling, like, like, like Apple was, was successful by launching the iPhone. And if this happens, uh, then we might be able to sell our hardware and our software system to other car companies as well. Mm -hmm. Because um, if you look to the industry right now, then you see that uh, they step step by step now into electric propulsion technology. But there's no way that those companies will become consumer electronics companies and do all the, the digital part and the, uh, the, the, the smart part of the car. So there might be a market to sell those systems and to sell the whole digital ecosystem behind it, mm -hmm. which then could, could scale uh, the ecosystem dramatically. I mean, one of the things that y you look at traditional automakers 
is they look at that UX experience, that telematics experience, they have wanted to own it. There's almost two worlds. They've wanted to own it themselves because they think it's the future, or they've spent so much money trying to develop it, and time and time again, they see consumers saying, we'd rather just use the Apple system or rather use the Google system within the car. And you're seeing in the last year or so big announcements from major automakers saying, we're going to go with Android in the car, just ha natively in there. It, how do you break through the, the Google and the Apple? What's, what's going to be your special sauce? Is it because your, your, your relationship's in China? Do you, is it easier there because, because of that? Yeah, there's two parts. One, the, the, the one part of the answer is definitely the product. You need not only um, uh, a software and, and internet and, and smart technology like Apple and Google might have, uh, you need the car technology as well. And there is no company bringing those things together. They need to be married, is what you say. Yeah, but this is, there's, there's no way. There's definitely yeah. no way that the big, car, uh, the big tech company and a car company will come up with a common product because there are different reasons behind it. Their, their, their culture, their working style will never fit. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the commercial interest behind it, uh, everyone wants to own the data and wants to be the, 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 the owner of the ecosystem. A car company will never allow a tech company to do so. And if the tech company doesn't have the right to own the data and run this ecosystem, they will not be interested. So the, the approach is to bring this together. And this is uh, the only company who's doing this right now. And having it ready for launch is, is for their future. When, when and now the, the second question yeah. when it comes to China. Yes, China is the biggest. It is and will be the biggest market, not only for electric cars, but for connected cars. Mm -hmm. And even shared mobility will be piloted in China, I'm absolutely convinced. Uh, and as we have some roots in China and some quite good connections, we feel ourselves in a good, good position. It, it sounds from your comments just a few minutes ago that you are in negotiations with the China partner. Is that, is that a J? Would they invest in the company or is it a more of a uh, contract manufacturing kind of relationship? And who is, who is this person? So one of, the le of my lessons learned of the past, of my past 25 years was um, um, it does not make sense to invest too early and too much money in in, in heavy assets and production technology. If you look to China, you find a lot of those assets around. There are a lot of plants which are not completely used. You find OEMs uh, which are not prepared for the future. They are, they are doing cars today, and, and not bad, I have to say, but they are not prepared for electric connected cars. So there might be a natural uh, combination of bringing our technology and our products together with uh, OEMs who own production capabilities right now, which are not put fully utilized, and then even governments coming in and supporting it uh, to make this whole ecosystem system work. So I'm getting the impression you're not going to tell me who you're talking with. Do you have uh, a, a deadline for when you want to announce a partnership in China? Uh, you know, this kind of discussions uh, are very difficult to predict when a certain outcome will be. And as I said before, Faraday is not a company talking too much, uh, too much about things we don't have. We would like to talk first about things we achieved already. So in certain point of time, which will not too far in the future, we are going to announce uh, when we achieved something. It, it would seem, though, it would be necessary for an IPO, that you would need to have those kind of things nailed down beforehand. Mm, I don't think so. It, it definitely might help. but. Um, we want to show our capabilities of execution. This, this is missing right now. We don't have a product at the customer. This is our weak point. And you will see the FF91 at the customer next year. And you will see a, a more mass volume product ready for, for scale or ready for industrialization. We feel this is a very good base already for, for potential investors in an IPO. When you're talking to investors right now, where, what's the money, what's the situation for money out, like out there in the wake of issues with WeWork or the kind of frustration with the Uber IPO. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for, uh, several years ago, the betting on the future of cars seemed like a really great <laughs> idea. Uh, we maybe are entering into a, maybe a winter period. Is, what, are you getting tougher questions? Or are you just finding money in different places? Where is money for these things right now? This is a very good question because, as you said, it's exactly right. As the whole climate is cooling down, and it's way more difficult now to, to, to get money and find investors than it was years before. And um, so the, uh, my observation is basically two things. One is um, everyone still understands and believes that this industry will transform. 
and that the future is not in selling cars, but in selling mobility and digital services. There's no doubt about it. And my feeling is the whole investment community understands that this will not be done by a traditional car company, but one by one of the new players. Now, the question is, which one will it be? Uh, one of the ones you see today, or maybe one you don't see right now. Um, we believe that Faraday is in a good position to become these players, and uh, we try to convince our investors. Now, um, they are asking much tougher questions, without any doubt. Uh, and what I see is the interest of, um, of private equity and, 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 and big investment funds, it's, it's going down to take the risk. Uh, but what is, what I, uh, on the other side, what I see is um, that uh, car companies and technology companies who, where we can be a natural partner, where, where we have technology they might need, they are very much interested partners. So we are talking to OEMs right now, we are talking to tech companies, um, um, uh, uh, for, for investment, and this is going through some, some projects uh, together where they are using our technology, and you might see some announcements soon. Okay, well, I would like to talk to you for another couple of hours. You've got a lot of traffic, but unfortunately, we're out of time. So it's always nice to see you, and thanks for the time.